Hi Internet, I'm Devin, the founder of Alexandria. Before discovering blockchain technology, I worked for many years in Hollywood, and I'm also a huge fan of internet media, so I'm familiar with both sides of the problems that are currently plaguing the entertainment industry. As a content fan, I've been frustrated by advertising that is so aggressive it regularly crashes my web browser. All too common censorship of information, the delay of TV show releases until the next day, the lack of support for lossless audio formats for music, and having to rebuy content I've already purchased many times before. As an artist, I know that musicians don't feel fairly compensated. Independent filmmakers don't have a good outlet for distribution at all. The vast majority of YouTubers don't make enough money to support themselves. And management of artist royalties and points on the back end are just such a complete mess they're not even worth talking about. The purpose of Alexander is to solve these problems. Our intent is to establish an open source standard for the publishing of digital content for direct commerce. From music to videos to feature films, 3D printable inventions, recipes, books, and more. By using a sophisticated amalgam of open source technologies, the decentralized library of Alexandria is protected from censorship and alteration or destruction of data. And because direct monetization is built right into the standard itself, instead of having to rely on proprietary distribution services outside of their control, like iTunes or Netflix, artists, labels, and studios can distribute directly and retain control over how their content is monetized. So let's dive in and see what it can do. So the best way to get started with Alexandria is checking down on the web at alexandria.media. So let's begin with a beautiful single released by Grammy Award winning musician and fan of blockchain technology, uh, Imogen Heap, Tiny Human. So as you can see, we have three different ways to get the song. We can pay to play, we can pay to buy, or we can pin to play. Uh, pay to buy is quite obvious. Obviously, I spend a dollar, I got the song. The other two are if I'm not sure if I want to spend a dollar yet. So bring this one up and spend one penny to listen to it. And there you go. As soon as the blockchain sees it, there we go, and I can hit play. So iTunes tries to solve this problem by uh, letting users listen to a 30 second, or now I think a, a 90 second sample of the song. Um, Spotify tries to solve the problem by commoditizing music, let you spend a uh, monthly fee in exchange for all of their content. And since most users listen to about 500 songs a month, you could think of that as about two cents per listen. But if you listen to less, your bill isn't going down, so it's really not the same thing. Um, instead, what we're showing here is actually paying one cent to listen to a song a single time, something you can only do with micropayments, which is pretty fantastic. And what it did is it convinced me, yes, I like this song. I'm going to go ahead and buy it now. So, bring up my wallet. Send one dollar. And as soon as the blockchain sees it, Again, it will just, there you go. It downloads the file to my computer and I can listen to it up to my heart's content. Um, now actually note that in the future it wouldn't have cost me a dollar, it would have cost me one cent less since I already uh, spent one cent to listen to it. If I listened to it 20 times, it would have been 20 cents less. Um, so let's go ahead and switch over to a, a full album to show this other feature, Pin to Play. Basically what it is, is it lets users trade something of value other than money for the content they're looking for. By pinning this album, I'm providing my storage space and bandwidth in exchange for getting to enjoy it at no cost. So I have to launch another application to use it, Alexandria Librarian, and then turn on IPFS, which actually handles the pinning. As soon as I can see that it's turned on, if I watch over here, then I can go ahead and click on pin and it pins the whole album for me and starts playing it. So because I've got the whole album pinned, I can click on another track and start playing that. So as long as I've got this whole album pinned, I can come here, I can click on play and listen to it to my heart's content. If I stop pinning it, if I've stopped providing that service uh, to the publisher of the song, then again, I go back to having to actually pay to listen to it or to, to download it. I want to go ahead and show you some of the other types of media that we can show over uh, Alexandria. First of all, an embedded PDF. This is Satoshi's original white paper. And it gives a great example, um, an opportunity to explain where the various types of data are being stored. Down here, the title, the publisher name, when it was published, the description, all these things are stored in the index of the library. That information is stored and protected by blockchain technology. Now keep in mind the file itself is not stored in the blockchain. The file could be extremely large if it was a movie. In this case, it's pretty small. Um, but instead of storing the file itself, what we do is we store this hash up here. This is an IPFS address. 
By putting that in the index, we can find this artifact, this media listing, and then we can also pull up the file itself, the PDF, using that hash over IPFS. So again, not stored in the blockchain, which means we're not going to have gigabyte movie files in the blockchain and stuff like that. We're going to have these short hashes that reference it. And now a lot of people have asked if we can do um, HTML, if we can do full web pages, so if we can handle HTML and other web languages. Um, and of course the answer is yes. This is a strange example to show uh, that we can, but in fact this little recipe here is stored in basic HTML. Here's the actual contents of it and you can see it's an HTML file. That file is again being distributed over the IPFS network. Okay, and the bread and butter of YouTube, of course, is cat videos. So we had to get a cat video in early. This isn't actually the very first piece of media uh, we published. I think the first one was in February or March or so of this year. Um, but one of the very first, one of the earliest, earliest pieces of content in the centralized library of Alexandria will forever be a cat video, and we think that's awesome. So let me go ahead and switch over to the uh, full application. Uh, to show a little bit more, just because as we can kind of see with these little three icons down here, these this showed the level of decentralization that it's at, and um, while a web browser can use IPFS, it can't use these other two. So um, let me go ahead and switch over to Librarian to turn them on, and while they're launching, I'll explain what they do. Um, Florin Coin blockchain allows the storage of up to 528 bytes of info in each transaction, so that data is actually being used to store the index data for Alexandria. Um, Library D is a daemon that we created to act as an intermediary between flooring coin and the application layer. So it handles the database schema and it parses the data in the blockchain into machine readable JSON. Um, and then IPFS is the amazingly awesome P2P network uh, that we use for file storage and distribution. So now in a second here, these two little lights will turn on and show us, yes, we have fully decentralized rails and we can switch this gateway up here. Gateway means it's going through web servers to local, which means it's going entirely through local services. So no one can track what I'm doing, no one can um, block me from being able to watch anything, etc. So, uh, now that we've done that, let me go ahead and switch, let's bring up uh, some music again. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up a great hidden track by uh, Indie uh, San Diego band called the Biddy Buns. Uh, some old friends of ours, um, and something we like to, to, to use for demos a lot because they're a really talented, fantastic band that eventually had to kind of get up and give up and go get other jobs because they didn't break into the mainstream. And we really think that a lot of it is to do with this distribution issue that we're trying to solve with uh, Alexander. So we love to show them our support whenever we can and uh, just tell them how much we love them. So let me specifically do that now and tell them how much I love them. Um, now you notice I'm doing this through Florin coin that might cause some confusion for some people. This will be totally obscured in the background in the future. You can spend Bitcoin to do this, but the actual comment itself is being stored in the blockchain. So send tips. So it'll actually be there forever and ever and ever, which is awesome. Um, now they just got that comment, but eventually um, this nice big empty white, white space below the content um, is where those comments will, will start listing out, just like in YouTube. Uh, so, that's cool. So, um, let me go ahead and pause this, and we'll bring up, let's go back to Miss, he Miss Heap's single tiny human, and grab the lossless version of it this time. Let's go through the paywall again. I will send my two cents. And I'm going to grab the flak version and start playing that. And so right away we start playing this flak version. Um, and what's important to note here is I know you can't hear the difference because this is uh, in in compressed through this video that you're watching right now. But the file itself that it's playing is uh, compressed at 2.6 to 2.8. Uh, megabits per second, which is noticeably twice uh, the bit rate of Tidal, and as you saw, it just started right away, so that was cool. Um, but now let's go ahead and do an even larger file. I switched to gateway mode, and let me go through the paywall again, I'll send my two cents, and start playing it, because in gateway mode we're just, we're, we're playing the content over normal HTTP servers, so this is similar to IT, uh, iTunes and Netflix and stuff like that, and yes, they have much larger um, uh, distribution networks and stuff like that, but uh, you can kind of see what the issue is, is as you try to cache, if for example you're watching a show and it gets disrupted and you start to come back to it, um, and you try to jump far enough in, it can really screw things up. Like, yeah, pretty much. It's pretty much locked up. 
Um, let me switch back to local. So we are using IPFS for the file storage and distribution right now. And I will click on pin. And it starts playing right away. Great. And I can actually jump quite a bit further into the movie. This is one of the biggest advantages to using uh, a peer to network like this, is I can just go ahead and jump, let's say, more than an hour in. Try that, and bam, it starts playing right away. So that's pretty awesome. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, this was fun. I used to be a Marine, so I grabbed a couple of uh, Marine buddies of mine, and we got to do a little cameo in the thing. Kind of film. That's me missing a 500 pound, 500 foot woman with a rocket launcher, terribly. Um, and I got my just desserts for doing so by getting drop kicked. Oof. Oof. Quite nasty. So, it's pretty awesome uh, the level of visual effects on a actually zero budget independent film. So, I love supporting that as well. <clears throat> okay, so last but certainly not least. I'm going to show you 25 megabit per second 4K video. We'll get pin first and then play. It might take a second. Fabulous. Okay. Go to full screen, and this is, in fact, a three foot tall hamster, essentially. Uh, it's the world's largest rodent, the capybara, in glorious 4K. Awesome. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, I've shown you embedding and playback of a wide variety of media types, an extremely high limit on data rates, so artists can publish beautiful high-res video and crisp, lossless music. Uh, we went through sending a comment with a tip, uh, using my mobile wallet to pay to play a song, and then to buy it, uh, and how I can trade some resources on my computer to enjoy content at no cost. Uh, there's a lot more to Alexandria, so we'll be doing another video soon to go over the more advanced features and functionality. We're also working on an easy-to-use drag-and-drop UI for publishing content, uh, which should be up and running soon, and we're really looking forward to getting that out. Everything in the library right now uh, has been published by one of us on the team making it, so <clears throat> we're super excited to start seeing what other users uh, will publish to it. We've designed it to truly be the people's library, so we, we can't wait to see what the world does with it. Thanks again for watching, uh, and if you'd like to get on our mailing list, or if you're a developer who'd like to lend a hand, or if you're an artist just really anxious to get some of your content published right away, uh, you can get, get in touch with us at dloa.net. Thanks again for watching.